Hello everybody. So, you think that there's nothing to paint because you're stuck inside. But there's always something to paint. So I thought today we might have a little fun doing something a bit different. And um, I had done this once in a class I had, which was to paint, paint eggs. Paint some eggs. I'm going to leave that one there. Okay, let's see how we can try to do that. Now, I don't know if I'll finish the whole painting. Um, let me just move this a little bit so you can see a little better the dish of eggs. Okay. Let's see. Let's try to make this fit a little, little better. <clears throat> let me move this over just a little bit more. If I can get more of that into the um, into the video, and I'm going to put a little I put a little piece of plastic under the uh, skillet and the bowl, and the only <clears throat> the only reason I did that was to tape it down here. I did that so that I would have a little bit of reflection on the table because this is a you know a folding table that's plastic and it really doesn't create good shadows but I thought well let me try to create a few shadows here on this reflected Got some nice shadows from those eggs there. Yeah, I think that that's got some nice shadows. So let's see what we can do with this and just have some fun with it. Um, I think uh, the bowl will be light. The shadows will be a bit dark. Um, the um, so the question is what to put in this background here. I think um, the skillet will be very dark so I can overlay the color a little bit. I can put some dark of the skillet on top of the so I'm just going to put oh, a hair no, no, no. We don't want that. We don't want that. Don't want something dirty on the brush. Okay, let's try again. Hmm. How did that happen? No cats here, so I don't know how that really happened. I think <clears throat> I'm just thinking what color will I put in the background? That would be fun, and that would be, I think I'm going to use um, my cobalt turquoise and just let some color go in. Nothing, you know, just a little unevenly put it in there and go around this skillet. I don't want it all even. I want it interesting. So I'm just going to do something like this. Spread it around a little bit. Um, create some, some light areas in it. Dabbing with my paper towel. Yeah, just do a little bit like that because I think it I think that the blue might be nice with the color of the eggs. And I'll just carry that color forward a little bit. Not very much, just very lightly. Maybe 
very lightly. I'll put some around this bowl very lightly. And then I'll drop in a little bit more color on the edge here. Um, and just bring a little bit of color to the edge of that bowl. Because that bowl needs to stay white. <clears throat> dropping in a little color so that's all just something simple for background and just a little bit of color very light amount of color under here so it's just I don't really want since the the eggs are going to be so white I don't want to interfere with the whiteness of the egg so I'm going to leave this for now to be without any color in this area. And um, since I didn't draw the eggs in, in advance, I'll just get a pencil, simple pencil, and uh, take a few of those eggs and sketch them. Uh, the handle's kind of in the way. Let's see, position them somewhat nicely. So I want one is going to kind of go out this way and a cup. Yep. And uh, <clears throat> always use a I always use a white eraser. It doesn't damage the paper. And because I was doing something that was fairly smooth and it's not um textured like a landscape. I like to have this eggshell intersect a little bit with that bowl, even though it's not doing it <clears throat> there. Um, that's what I want it to do. And then I've got another one coming down, and that one is going to intersect with the one above, so it'll create a nice little pattern of and that egg goes around like this and there's some edges going here and then this one is also going to intersect with the one above so there's a certain harmony going on there and that one is kind of under the handle so we can't see all of it, but you can see the center um, here. And um, I'll just lighten it up a little bit. don't want it to be too dark. <clears throat> and then there is another one. Um, and that one. Okay, so just indicate those. Okay, so the, what's happening now is that there's this continuity going on is what I call a circular pattern. It is a circular composition. There are all different kinds of compositions and uh, that you think about when you're laying out your colors. Um, let me stretch this out a little bit. Okay, good. Uh, there's what's called a crucifix composition, where something is done in the shape of a cross. Uh, there's triangular composition, there's diagonal composition, there's rectangular compositions. Um, and so this, I would say, is a circular composition. And, um, and what I will do is reinforce that a bit by my placement of shadows. Okay, so to start, uh, let's do some egg yolks. Let's have a couple of egg yolks. And there's a couple of, of um, places where the light is reflecting. So I'm going to leave some white. 
on the egg yolk. Okay. And I'm going to blend in a little bit of um, that. That was like a Hansa yellow. And I'm going to blend in a little bit of uh, burnt sienna. Make some shadow around the egg, egg yolk. And the paper that I'm using today is Arches, but it is their hot press. Sure, I don't go into that area of the the skillet that is going to be fairly light in the and reflective. So that's the beginning of one egg yolk. Let's do another one over here. Do another egg yolk. So you can't say you don't have something to paint because there's always something, um, whether it's an onion or a garlic. These things are so interesting to paint. And uh, you can just so I'm going to do a little bit of shadow on that egg yolk. blend that in. So this is hot press arches paper and it is a 300 pound uh, arches hot press. And the thing about the hot press paper is because of the way that it's made it's extremely smooth. And I'm putting now a little bit of, of blue, cobalt blue, dropping that into the egg to improve on the shadow of the egg in, in the shadow side of the egg. So I'm going to make the shadow side pretty much on the left hand side with the light coming um, mostly from the window, which you can't see but there's a window um, right there. So. Okay, now I already have oil in the skillet, so I put that in to kind of reflect, uh, show some reflection. And what I'm going to do is take some uh, blue, because I don't know what my final shadow color will be in the skillet, but uh, there's always blue in the shadow, so I'm just going to indicate for now with blue kind of the shape of that. There's always blue in shadows, so whether I have more of a violet shadow or more of a gray shadow or whatever it happens to be, I can't go wrong right now <clears throat> putting some blue in there. So here it's all in shadow on this side and as you know I, I work by glazing so I, I start with a light, fairly light wash of color and then I oh, don't want that color going in there and um, what I'm going to do in this blue, now because this is hot press paper, it doesn't uh, behave the same way as the, the knot or rough paper. So um, it shows every little thing. But I have, what I want to do is um, show some areas where there is little white spots of reflection from this window in front. Now if I was doing this very carefully I might have indicated ahead of time where were going to be my areas of reflection. But this is done as a demo, as a tutorial, 
not to be a finished fussy painting. So I'm, I'm doing this fast and I'm not worrying about. I think you can see some highlights that, that are there. And then I'm going to take a little darker blue to just show the, the base essentially of this. Um, this is a little blue. Put a little black in that blue. Show the base of this skillet. But again, it's got some reflections coming in. So I'm, it's not going to be all solid. But the main thing is where it joins the eggs. I want it a little darker. Where the oil joins the eggs to indicate the shadow of the white of the egg sitting down there on the oil. So when you're painting, you think about, okay, there's this blob of stuff, and it's reflecting some light, and it's got a little shadow. And, but it's in some oil, so that oil itself has a little bit of light reflection here and there. And it's not a big solid color. I'm just going to indicate that for now. But isn't that interesting how it's already starting to look like something? And the main thing is you don't worry about what colors you actually see, but you think about, okay, if this is in shadow, then it has blue in it. And then if I want it to be more black later, I can always put a layer <clears throat> of the black on top of that. So I'm going to leave that part alone for a little while because it needs to dry a little bit while I'm fussing over another part. I can hear my dog scratching at the door. Hmm. My, my girl who has her puppies, I don't know why she's scratching at the door. But anyway, I'm going to ignore her and go over here, because I just spent a half an hour walking her around out in the yard, so I guess she's just found something on the floor that she wants to dig in. She's there with her puppies, nursing them. And she's been so good. She has nine puppies, and she's really doing a great job, and every one of them has gained about a third of a pound in the past week. They're only a week old, so that's a lot of weight they've gained already. Some have gained about uh, almost a half a pound in one week. So this is in a white bowl, and I just want to indicate that the eggs are in shadow, <clears throat> create a shadow in the bowl. And let me wipe this thing off here. There. See that? How about that? Already there's something emerging. So I put a little bit of uh, phthalo blue and I mixed that <coughs> with a little bit of burnt sienna. to make that color that's kind of a warm gray here. So I took a little phthalo blue and burnt sienna, mix them together to make the shadow in this white bowl. Okay. I'm not going to do the eggs yet because if I try to do the shadow, the contour of the eggs, it'll make a mess with the shadow in the bowl. So let me just carry that shadow in the bowl up a little bit as the inside of the bowl. A little bit more around the egg. And then try to blend that. I mean, normally I would move my, my board around to make it easy for me to reach those areas that are on the other side. 
but since I don't want to um, put my hand on that wet paint that's down there, I'm twisting myself up into a pretzel here to do this. Okay, so I think that that's the inside of the bowl. And um, <clears throat> I think I need a new paper towel. That one's looking a little grim. And I'm just going to soften that edge out. Okay, <clears throat> so that's starting to look like a bowl. <clears throat> I'm going to use that same color that I've mixed to begin to sh show the outside of the bowl. And the shadow is on this side of the bowl since the light is coming from the window that's on the other side. Uh, it's over here. So even when you can't see your shadows very well, you should make up in your mind, where is my light coming from? And I've decided that my light is coming from over there. Not high up, but over there, almost horizontal. So that way, no matter what I see in front of my eyes, I will paint it from the decision that I've made about where my light is. I mean, some people set up their still life in a box and control the source of light so that it doesn't change from time to time while they're painting. But unfortunately with me, I'm not really doing that and I'm just um, using the natural light from the window right now. But I have to remember where my light is because if I come in here to, in the evening and I'm working on the painting, the light will be different. So it's a white bowl, but I've put this in shadow. And now I'm removing some paint from the front part of the bowl that has more light coming to it, but I'm leaving the darker shadow down here. Now I'm going to bring in just a little more color, a little more dark, because I'm taking some black, because to really make something look like it's sitting on a table, it's a good idea to kind of root it down in the bottom of the bowl where the shadow normally would be darker as it curves down. So I'm just going to leave that like that. I'm not going to smooth it out too much because I actually enjoy the fact that it looks like a watercolor and it's mixing in there. <clears throat> All right, now I can think I can go I think I can go back to this part and I'm going to go with the black. And since the light's coming from the other side, it's actually very dark here. Let me get some better black than that. I'm going to make, <clears throat> this is really in shadow right here. Okay, right here, because the light's coming from right, up, right beyond it. So I want that part. This is the darkest part of my painting. Right there. That's the most shadow. Okay. I think you can see what I'm talking about. If I have the light here coming this way, then that part of the skillet is in the most shadow. Now, I basically um, wiped my brush, put water on it, and I'm going to spread that out. But it's going to be lighter as it moves around because now it's moving around to be in the light. You see what I mean? Yeah. 
is only just a little bit down on the edge that's dark. So it's, I put water on my brush and I'm stretching this paint. You see that? Stretching this paint to be lighter and lighter as it goes over into the light part of the skillet. And up here we have <clears throat> some reflection coming down here where it's fairly light. Uh, you, you might not be able to see that as I see it, but it's fairly light there. But then in the center <clears throat> it's darker. And that indicates some curving. It's kind of a <clears throat> so I'm trying to indicate some curving there. So far the paper's behaving pretty well. <clears throat> Um, because most of these surfaces in this painting are fairly smooth, I thought let me use a smooth paper rather than a rough paper. Um, a rough paper would have, a little, you know, uh, what's called not, not smooth and not rough, probably would have been the easiest to use. And, um, but I thought, well, let's, let's do this, even though it's more of a challenge sometimes to work with this hot press paper. In my classes, we, we work with all the different papers so that people can understand how to choose the paper that might give you the results that you want. So it's a matter of choosing the right paint. Sometimes you want, trans I'm using all transparent paints here. I'm not using any opaque paints. So you have to choose the paints that you want. I'm not using any granulating paints, um, not even in the skillet. <coughs> okay, I think that's starting to look like a skillet. All right, I'm going to leave the edge of the skillet right now pretty light, um, and then I'll go in carefully and I'll just do the the shadow as it turns because because it's it is on the top and the light is shining on it so it's fairly light now as we move behind the skillet because this part is in shadow it like that part up here this part is going to be very very dark and especially where it sits on the surface of the table to show that it's really sitting there and it's heavy and it's bonded to the table. It's very, very dark. Okay. This part, this is very, very dark. And down here, very, very dark. But what I'm going to do is, again, clean my brush. <coughs> and stretch some of this color because it is metal and what's happened here is the light comes in it hits the surface of the table and some of that light bounces back onto the metal and makes it a little lighter so even though it's on the shadow side of the of the skillets on the shadow side, there is light on the table <coughs> bouncing back, bouncing back onto that metal, which is shiny metal, and that light is being reflected, so it is lighter. You see what I mean? Okay. So when you're painting, it's not just a process of mindlessly copying <clears throat> something, but it's a process of thinking about what is happening. 
in terms of the light and the shadow. Because what you're really painting more than anything is light and shadow. So now this is very much, it's tilted a little bit toward the light. <clears throat> so this is very light right here. But then it starts to curve downward and away from the light and it gets dark. So over here on this side, in the shadow side, it's very dark. You see that? Very, very dark on the shadow side and underneath. <clears throat> very dark in here, in that crevice in the shadow. Very dark underneath the handle. But then, there is some lighter, it is a little bit lighter here, and a little bit lighter here, because that is facing toward the light. Okay? I don't know if I'll be able to finish this whole thing today, but I'm going to try. I'm going to try to do a really quick little painting. I'm not a quick painter, and so for me to push myself to do this very fast is unusual for me. I tend to do a little bit, let it dry, then do a little bit more, let that dry, rather than have these kind of messy things where the wet paint mixes in with the color next to it and it isn't exactly the way I want it. But anyway, more like plain air painting. Okay, yeah, it's starting to look like a skillet. And just do a little more down here. And now what I want to do is, <clears throat> good. So what are we going to do about those eggs? Okay, the eggs. Interestingly enough, for some odd reason, the eggs have a little bit, I'm going to turn you, fella, back to where you were before when we started. Okay. Um, the eggs have a bit of a bluish cast to them. So, I'm going to, of course, they're have that wonderful oval shape. So I'm going to create some shadow. That might begin to approximate the light coming in and hitting the eggs. Let me try to smooth that out. And uh, that was just a blue, a cobalt blue. But now I'm going to take a little bit of, uh, for some reason, I don't know why, but I've decided a little Van Dyke brown and a little bit of phthalo blue to get a kind of um, darker neutral. And I'm going to take a smaller brush because this one's getting a little too big for what I want to do with the fine work. And I want to create this shadow here a little more strongly of the egg. So I'm using a smaller brush. I have a little more control over it. create a little bit shadow where the two eggs touch. Okay. And I'm 
made that egg a little bit, the egg shape is a little bit off. So I'm actually going to cut in there, there, even though it's not quite right. I'm going to create some shadow going that way and some shadow going this way with that blue. Now that egg is a little better shaped. And that was dark enough to correct the shape of the egg, so that worked. And this is when you're glazing, I can always come in later and do a little bit more with darks. Now I'm going to take that dark blue again and mix it very dark with a little Van Dyke brown and phthalo blue. And I'm going to go in and make a shadow where that, oh, I think I'll add a little black, where that bowl is making a shadow on the table. Okay, I'm going to put that in there. That allows me to separate those two eggs. And look how they begin to pop out already. And I take a little water and pull that down and around and make myself a shadow for the bowl. And I think I'll just carry it over here to the edge. Okay. It's your creation, so it doesn't have to be exactly what I'll carry this over a little bit to the edge too. So these two items now are very much joined together by their shadow. I think I'm going to drop a little bit of Van Dyke Brown into that mix on the warmer side, on the light side, just to make it more interesting. And I'll take some of the phthalo blue alone and drop that in on the darker side so that there's some even though I had made a blending of it before underneath now by adding the color separately in here adding that Van Dyke brown directly there it makes a more interesting shadow by having the two colors visible So let's do the same over here. Um, first I have the mixture. I put the mixture down of blue and brown. And then I'm going to put some of the take some of the brown, the Van Dyke brown, and, 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 and in the warmer side, make it a little warmer like that, you see. But then take the blue alone and have it pull over here. Have them mix a little bit on the paper. Makes the shadow a little bit more interesting, I think. You see what I mean? And I'm just carrying that shadow here. Um, and I've got some blue and some brown, not perfectly mixed, because that's the idea. And I'm just going to put that, have that come over here and make that shadow just come on down here. And you see the paper is, um, hmm, once, phthalo blue is a staining color. And uh, if I were more in my right mind, perhaps I wouldn't use it <laughs> on this paper, which is not very forgiving. Um, so, but anyway, I put the yellow blue on there. And so it's a staining color, so immediately it soaks into the paper. It can't be removed very easily. But what I want to do is now um, also show that there is, in fact, a hole in this shadow, reflecting the nature of the 
hole in the skillet. Okay. So this is kind of a colorful, I think you can probably see some of the colors in the, um, in the shadow. Some brown and some blue mixed together. And then now I'm going to take some black. This is an ivory black. And just put a little bit of that right at the very bottom to connect that that skillet to the table, really root it into the table, make it sink into the sink into the table. Because it's a, yeah. So it's not perfect, but it's okay. And I'm just going to diffuse that, oh, that water so dirty that it's made that dirty. Okay. Normally, I would take my time and get clean water. But I am just spreading this just a little bit down in here, so we don't have, we don't necessarily want sharp edges around these shadows. Okay. So there's the beginning of the eggs. And um, I'll put a little bit more now. The same kind of shadows, uh, but I'll take a burnt sienna instead of the dark Van Dyke brown. Um, for inside of the eggs, I'll take cobalt blue instead of phthalo blue and burnt sienna. That gives me a much warmer gray for doing the inside of some of these eggs. Okay. Where there's shadow. So it's not that the eggs are gray, but there's a shadow there, so there we have it. See that nice warm, that nice warm color. And this one has more light. Um, so then we'll do another one. Quick, quick. You see, I'm just doing quick, quick. Nothing, not fussing with this. This is just to show you a technique. Um, this is not a polished. I'd say this is more of a sketch than anything. Not a polished painting, but so let's put a little bit more where the shell is in the center, a little more in the center, a little more in the center, and do the same over here. Some color here, some good, and some water. Okay, now. In order to just finish off these eggs, I'm just going to do a little bit of light blue. Here and there, to just indicate a little bit the egg. Okay, just a little bit. All right, and then the next step, which is the big important one, is the shadow under the egg. Need a better, better mixture of color. So just like over here, uh, a little blue and brown mixed together, and to make a shadow. And then I'm going to pull that shadow down a little bit, just like I did with the other shadows. So let me go and get some more of that blue and brown. And um, put, again, some shadow over here from this egg. And sometimes when you have the bowl and the egg together, having two shadows, then it gets a little more intense in this area here, you see? And then just a little bit more under this one, 
to indicate, okay, this one's got a shadow too that's going this way. Okay. And then a little bit more over here, under here, there's some shadow under this A. Now, later on I would come and do a little tiny bit on the edges there to indicate them. Um, but I can't do that right next to the paint right now because it would all blend together and make a mess. So I need to just diffuse that and then diffuse this a little bit, diffuse the shadow a little bit. It's not, it doesn't have to be a hard shadow. <laughs> and so the, almost finished with this painting. So there's a little bit of a line here going around. That's because the, the top of the skillet is in the light, but it curves around. So there's a part of it that's curving around in a little bit in shadow. So I don't want to outline, <clears throat> I don't really want to outline the, the skillet, but that's pretty much how it looks. Um, you know, and parts of it are not uh, as much in the light as others. So I'm going to, I'm not going to do it all perfectly light, okay? But give you an idea. So some of it's in light, some of it's not. But we'll just indicate it because that, ed that, that edge is important. make some of the edge stand out by just putting in a little more shadow there. Okay, good. And then I think I'm going to put in a little more <coughs> um, dark in a few areas here. Because it's a little too flat looking there in that, in that oil but I'm going to leave still a few areas of light and uh, deepen this shadow here a little bit more. Because this is really the focal point where we have this extreme dark next to bright light. And I know that egg whites are not blue, but it's okay to leave them blue. I like them. I like them kind of blue. Okay. But I might put a little bit of a little more contour in them too. A little more shadow because they are they're kind of they do have some shadow areas in the in the white. Do that. I hope this is, um, I hope you can see this okay and it's looking okay. Let me take a quick check. I think you can pretty much see it. It's not perfect, but let me move it over a little bit more. It's a little better. You can start to see it a little better. And um, I'm going to just make those egg yolks pop just a little bit more by, first of all, taking away this very dirty water, running over some clean water. I want those eggs to, yolks to pop just a little bit more. So the way that I'm going to do that is that I'm bringing a little bit of orange. Yes, this is going to be nice. A little bit of orange into those yolks. And that should make those yolks a little more interesting as they, the, bright, the brighter color 
the white reflection and the very dark thing make this the focal point. Okay? By having all that contrast of color and values in that area, that becomes the focal point. And the only thing left now is this slight, slight curved edge of this bowl. Just a small amount of indication of the curving of this bowl. So that we put, and I'm using some cobalt blue for doing that. And I'm not doing it everywhere, but doing it in some areas. I'm wiping my brush so it's not doesn't have so much color on it. Okay. I don't like that. Taking my scrub brush and scrubbing that. Because that made a mess there. Taking my scrub brush and scrubbing that a little bit. This is my scrub brush. It's made very hard bristles made just for doing the quick scrubbing. Okay, good. And um, I think I need a rigger. I'll take a fine brush. Just want this edge here to pop a little bit. So I'm bringing in a pretty bright blue there. a little bit. Okay, I think that's um, good for now. It needs a little more work, a little more fine work, but I think this is a good start and right now it needs to dry. So thank you for joining me. I'm going to cook my eggs for my dinner tonight. They look grand. Thank you for joining me, and um, I hope this made uh, your time this week just a little bit more fun. Hi, everybody. I'm back, and this is a continuation of the, the um, watercolor we were doing, and it had to dry because it was very saturated with color. And while you were away, and I was and it was drying, and then I worked on it a little bit. So, I often work at night, and I can't really film very well at night. And um, more or less, I continued. You know, we had the frying pan and the eggs. Well, I, I ate the eggs, and they were delicious. And the ones that were left, I soft boiled. But I wanted to intensify this background and what I did was I put more of the turquoise in, I put some darker blue, and I put uh, some granulating dark blue which is called Luna, lunar, lunar blue. And down here to kind of balance out the soft browns and some oranges here in the eggs. I put some burnt sienna uh, in this area and there's some blue and burnt sienna and as you know the shadow was done with more darker blue and um, dark uh, Van Dyke brown and burnt sienna. So basically what we have in here is all uh, browns like burnt sienna and Van Dyke brown and even burnt umber and we have blues so we have turquoise blues uh, we have phthalo blues we have ultramarine blues and we have cobalt blues so those are the two sets of colors that we have here except for the yellow in the yolk and the, the white is the white of the paper now since I did the background while you were while this was drying I would just want to show you how I did that so here I had some light 
before, you might remember I had some light burnt sienna and some um, light cobalt turquoise in that area. And what I did was I brought in some darker blues in, in washes to intensify some of those colors. And I even in some places brought in, and I'm just showing this to you on a piece of scrap paper, I brought in even some blacks and let that mix in there. And, um, and then down here, I brought in another granulating color by Daniel Smith. It's called Lunar Earth. And I, I put some of that in there, but I brought in some additional burnt sienna and made it a little darker so it wasn't so light. I like to carefully build up my colors because once they're a certain level, you can't really erase them and uh, scrub them out very easily. So um, that's what I did. And then I let it dry and I still wasn't completely satisfied that it had the diversity and intensity that I wanted. But as it was drying, I have to let this dry a little bit. I might even use a hair dryer. Uh, sometimes I do that. Yep, here's one. Um, when you really want to hurry a process up a little bit, you can use a hair dryer on your watercolor. Normally, I don't use it because it moves the paint around a bit. But it's one way to dry it out a bit. Because what I want to show you is that when it gets to a certain level of drying, which you can start to see there, when it gets to a certain level of drying, that you see a sheen. I don't know if you can see it there, but you see a sheen developed. So it's not dry yet, but that is the time that if you want to add some salt, that's the time to do it. You don't want to add salt while it's very wet, because then it will just, it won't create the effect that I'm going to show you. But I'm just going to leave that for a while, and we'll come back to it, and I'll show you um, what happened there. There should be some texture developed from the salt. But in the meantime, let's go back to this um, painting here, because everything is essentially done except for the center of those eggs, to just make them look a bit like eggs. So there's no white paint here. This is all just the paper showing through. And what I'm going to do is, with blues, with blues and um, any blues at all actually will work. Uh, but depending on the hue that you want to have, there's one of my hairs there. Depending on the hue that you want to have, um, cobalt's nice with a little bit of darker blue, like ultramarine blue. Cobalt's sort of a middle level blue, but it's um, very clear. The ultramarine blue will granulate. So if I take that cobalt blue and mix with a little bit of ultramarine blue, you see the two here, and then I add what's called Van Dyke Brown. You see that, the Van Dyke Brown? That creates a bluish, a warm bluish gray. So all I want to do here is make the shadow in here a little more distinct so that there's a sense of a sense of the shadow in here. Here's, um, there's an egg over 
here. And, and where that shadow is coming up to the shell just above, there's a little bit of the, it shows a little bit of the, the shell up above and how it's broken. So I'm putting it in fairly dark. I can drop in some of the dark brown separate from the dark blue. Let them mix together in here. And then I'm going to take water, clean my brush on the paper towel with just a wet wet brush, but not too wet. So I wet it, I, drop, I dry it a little bit, and then I spread it around a little bit. I'll leave a little more water than that, but not too much. There, I just spread it a little bit, leaving some of it very dark and some of it light. And then there's another one. Maybe I'll make the color a little more blue for that other one to differentiate them just a little bit. There's another one right here. And again, there's some, there's some, goes up to the crack shell and it's a little bit uneven there to imply a crack shell. And it's a little bit darker in the bottom of the opening of the shell. So, put it down in the bottom of the shell inside. I'm going to make it dark. Okay, so I hope that that's beginning to look like eggshells. Um, people might not know their eggshells if there weren't eggs right there, but their mind will be wanting to see eggshells. So, uh, they'll want, so they'll, they'll make up for the lack of detail in it. So I just want to have that be very dark down in the inner part of the shell, and not as dark toward the outside. And um, I'll do one more, one more back here, just a little bit down here. And that is more open to the back. Remember, the light was coming from here. It's more open to the back, so it won't be quite as dark. I'm making it a little more blue. And then blending it out. You can see how it's lighter because it's closer to the light coming from here, and it's tilted that way. So it's not quite as dark, so I'm doing that. Then the other thing I want to do is just give these eggs just a little bit of contour. Not too much, just a little bit of contour, just like I did with the bowl here. Taking that same bluish brown warmth shadow and just giving a little bit of contour, just like the bowl here. Remember the bowl was done with the same kind of colors. Mixture of blue, any blue, and any brown. Some, some of the warmer browns, like burnt sienna, will, will give you a, a, a shadow that's warmer. And some of the darker browns, like the Van Dyke, will give you a shadow that's um, not as warm. So I'm just putting a little more shadow in here, blending it. Okay, so basically this painting is done. Um, it's, and I just wanted to show you the finishing touches. I put a little bit, I had put a little bit more glazing on the egg yolks because they're kind of an important detail in this painting. And I'll just show you, I took an orange, it's called Sennelier orange, for example, and I'll show you, just glazed over, just glazed over that yellow. First I glazed over it with some burnt sienna to 
create the shadow as it rounded. And then I glazed over it with a little bit of Sennelier orange to get it to brighten up a little bit. And here, the contour of the eggs was done with a couple of tones of blue. I'll show you one more time. I'll do one a little bit more. I just glazed over the egg like this, you see? You see? To begin to create, so I'm just deepening part of that egg shadow. Just to give it a sense of a shadow. Um, and I've chosen it to be a bluish shadow, um, but it could have also made it a warmer shadow, more of a uh, brownish tone, but that, that works well with the context of the painting. So this painting is essentially done. But I just want to show you now, again, um, I had put some salt, fine salt, fine sea salt, okay, on this painting. And when I, now that it's dry, and I take the salt away, you can see that it's textured, okay? And so that was what I did here. But then I went over it with the lunar blue um, granulating paint in some areas. And I'll show you. Lunar, lunar blue by Daniel Smith has some phthalo blue and black in it and little speckles of granulation. So I decided I'd have a little more texture. And by adding some additional, but what's happening is that the, um, the texture below shines through the transparent wash above so you can still see so you see the granulation that is coming but you're also getting some of the texture from the sea salt below and the way that salt works is that the salt when it's put on a a, a, a wash that has a sheen I think you can see some of that texture so, I wanted to create a little bit of texture in this painting. So it wasn't all flat, smooth surfaces. So this is done, and that's how it was done, um, with several layers. First washed turquoise, then a little more darker blue, and then some sea salt on the sheen and then some granulating blue above. So four layers, basically, to get that background. And the same in the bottom here, I did this basically the same thing, because I took the Lunar Earth, which is another Daniel Smith color that granulates, and over the wash on the bottom of the painting, where I had put the sea salt and the burnt sienna, I put the, the Lunar Blue the lunar earth rather. And then I, sometimes I take a little bit of spray and get things to blend together with my atomizer, you see? And um, get it to blend together. And one other thing that I did, because I still wasn't completely happy with the, the paint uh, in the background. <coughs> so the very <coughs> last thing that I did was I took some blue, like this, okay? And I put it on my rigger brush, or on a toothbrush. Again, I want it to be a little bit dry, but I took it and I just did this, you see? All right, and then I took also some of that burnt sienna, did the same thing down in the brown area. And so I have three ways that I'm creating a feeling of texture in that background. The sea salt, the granulating uh, lunar colors, and a little bit of sparkle. 
And that is how eventually it ended up like that, textured on what is a, vi a very, very smooth paper, a hot press paper. Okay, so that's it, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for joining me. Enjoy your self isolation. This is my fourth week of isolating. I started early, but I've been through a number of epidemics. I've been through cholera epidemic in Zambia, through, through typhoid in uh, Iraq, from bird flu in Afghanistan. So I'm used to what it takes to deal with something like this. So as soon as I saw the handwriting on the wall, I basically um, isolated myself to be able to stay as safe as possible and be able to take care of all the animals that are here, which include nine puppies, five dogs, and three horses. So, so I don't want, I'm trying not to get sick, because if I get sick, they don't have anybody to take care of them. So anyway, thank you for joining me, and stay safe, everybody.